booktube this is kelly thank you so much for watching my channel books i'm not reading i'm joined by my husband jason Howdy. from old blues chapter and verse and we are making this video to celebrate that i have made <coughs> more than 500 videos on my channel which is wild it is wild it is wild to think and apparently all of you really like to watch us argue so, um, after I had finished reading Victor Hugo's masterpiece, Les Miserables. Which I have not read. Jason has not read it yet, but he must someday. He must, must. Um, anyway, we watched three film adaptations of Les Miserables. We watched the 1998 feature film with Liam Neeson and Jeffrey Rush. We also watched the 2012 um, musical of Les Mis, uh, with Hugh Jackman and Russell Crowe. And then, oh, you're going to have to help me pronounce his name. We also watched, um, there's six episodes of this. This came out in 2018 and 2019. Um, a mini series of Les Miserables starring Dominic West and David. I think it's, I think his name was pronounced Oyelowo. So you can see him right there on the end. That is the actor who played Javert in the miniseries. Um, all right, Jason and I, This I think this is our third one. Yeah. We've done one on four adaptations of uh, Emma. Mm -hmm. And then we did one on Pride and Prejudice. First question for this video is, which of the three adaptations is closest to the book? Now, Jason can't answer this. Of course, it's got to be the miniseries of Les Miserables. Now, I still had some major problems with the miniseries, but we're going to get to that later. All right. So, it should be said as well that there will be spoilers Oh, in this yes. Video. Thank you so much. So, let's start talking about the characters. Now, again, obviously, like, I'm coming at it from a slightly different perspective now that I've actually read... Les Miserables. So, who do we think gave the best performance as Jean Valjean? Uh, or who do you think? Who do I think gave the best performance as Jean Valjean? Um, who do I like best as Jean Valjean? Um, uh, so, you answer first. <laughs> as I think about this. All right. Um, so I'm going to go with Dominic West in the miniseries. I think he did a really, a really good job there. Again, there were a few things in the screenplay that are not in the book that, that bothered me, kind of irritated me a little bit, but, but yeah, so that's who I would go with. That's who you would go with? That's who I would go with. Um, so. Although, although I would say, I, I, I still think, yeah, Hugh Jackman also does it. He does a good job. It's not Liam Neeson. All right, so let me begin by saying I think all three of them <laughs> do fine. Um, and, yeah, I would I would probably say Dominic West. I would give him the edge just, just a tiny bit. Mm -hmm. um, and, and, like, there are moments. There are just there, there are moments in, in that, that film, that miniseries, and one of them's actually in the trailer, right? And it's, it's I think I think it's a moment where like, he's in prison, he's got the beard going, and Javert's talking to him, and and we just see we just see his face. He doesn't say anything, but there's there's like something happening there. there right? Yeah, like there's something incredibly. <clears throat> I won't I get choked up or anything, <laughs> but there's 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 something really incredibly moving about that shot. I think. Um, and you can just you can see the weariness, uh, but also the just the strength of character, um, and there's a kind of like something tragic going on as well in his expression in that scene. Hmm. Um, yeah, he's he's one of these. I mean, it's the kind of performance that makes you makes you wonder like why hasn't he become a massive yeah, star? Yeah, why isn't Dominic so. West a huge star? He should be. Yeah, he totally should be. And I will link the trailers to all three um, films that we're discussing down below, as well as our previous um, argument <laughs> related videos. Okay, so next up, Javert, which 
is a source of contention at times in our household. So we've got Jeffrey Rush in the 1998 adaptation. We have Russell Crowe in 2012. And we have David. Oh, you're low. Whoa. Thank you. <laughs> I'm so sorry. <laughs> um, in the miniseries. So, Jason? Uh, all right. So I'm going to choose Jeffrey Rush. Oh, interesting. As the best Javert. And, and here, here is why. Okay, so I want to say a couple of things about the other Javerts as well. <laughs> Context is important. Um, so Russell Crowe's, I think Russell Crowe is fine. I think his acting uh, is fine. I actually think his singing is okay. Um, <clears throat> he just, so, so the bad. problem with Russell Crowe's so singing bad. in it is that he's not the kind of singer that that kind of music demands. Or lends itself to. Um, so it was on some level a mistake to cast him. But I think he did as much as he could with his abilities in that role as, as was possible. Um, now, as far as David Oyelowo goes in the miniseries. Who I would pick, by the way. Okay, so that's your favorite show there. I think the problem with his performance is that he... So what's the expression? I think he gives away, he gives away too much too soon. We as viewers shouldn't suspect that he suspects Valjean of being Valjean in that scene just yet. He doesn't. He doesn't know. He doesn't have suspicions yet. Um, the act of strength that tips him off, that makes him start wondering, hasn't happened yet. Mm -hmm. And so I think there are moments in his performance where he. It's just like, you know, and I get it. Films are filmed out of order, et cetera, et cetera. And sometimes, you know, it's important for actors to be able to navigate intellectually and emotionally where, where they are where the in the story. Yeah. And I just feel like there are a couple of moments in that miniseries where, where he's playing the wrong register okay. for, for what's actually happening in that moment. So why do you think Jeffrey Rush is the best one? Um, because Jeffrey Rush is really good at... Um, there's a kind of so Javert is strong, you know, et cetera, et cetera. But there's also something um, very kind of insidious about Jeffrey Rush when he's when he's like in villain mode, like like <laughs> you know, I, I hesitate to use the word kind of slimy, you know. But there's something kind of snake like about about him. The degree to which he's suspicious is not just there in the lines of dialogue; it's there in the way he looks. At Liam Neeson, it's there in the way he speaks. And then also, I really love his death scene in that Les Mis mm -hmm. better than the other two. Um, I love how he puts the shackles on himself and that shot of him just falling back. And that's back, actually in the trailer. Falling which really back into the water. Me. Yeah. Um, it's, it's a hell of a good shot. Um, so that film was directed by Billy August, for those of you who don't know. And um, and while it's a much weaker film than it, Billy it, August's it is very best films, film. uh, he directed The Best Intentions um, about Ingmar Bergman's parents, and that's one of my favorite movies of all time. So Billy August, even even in his films that aren't quite as good, there are moments like the scene with Javert falling back into uh, not it's, I guess it's not a moat, a canal um, is is what it seems like. It's a like. river. Well, it seems like a canal to me. Anyway. <gasps> Okay. That's a great shot. I, so. w I would say like all three, <laughs> with the exception of Russell Crowe's singing. Like I think if, two and a half. <laughs> if, if Russell Crowe were to play Javert in just a, a non-musical adaptation, um, he has, the, the, the part requires like this certain cold stoniness. Um, and Which he I, does well. Yes, he does well. But I also think, like, Russell Crowe in the musical, he tries... I think he, he gives more humanity um, to the character than Victor Hugo does. Um, like, the scene where all the bodies are laying out and he takes his own star off of his uniform. Do you remember this at all? And puts it on Gavroche, the little boy. Like, oh, baby, Javert yeah. would not do that. That is not... That is not, yes, that, that is, he is, he is just made of ice, I feel like. I think David. Oh, you low. Thank you. Um, in the miniseries, um, 
you know, it's in part because he has more time, right? He has more time to develop things. Like, you see the obsession that he has with catching Jean Valjean. Um, he just has, there's just more room for that character to kind of breathe in, in the, the mini series. So, all right, moving on. Fantine. You want me to go first? Uh, yeah, go ahead. Okay. So I do struggle this with, so Fantine is played in the 1998, uh, one by Uma Thurman, who I had completely forgotten <laughs> was in that. Um, and then of course, Anne Hathaway in 2012, and then Lily Collins in the miniseries. The thing that I like about Fantine's character in the miniseries is that we get to see her like when she's like, like there's so much more again there's more room for her story because there is a lot more of her story that is not in anything else um we get to see her when like i feel like in the musical we see her right as she's just like about to be at the breaking point we get to see her before that when she's like hopeful about life when she's in that relationship that, right. that led to her having right. to that. Yeah. Yes, yes. So we get to see what that is like for her. And um, so I feel like that's that's really important. And I think Lily Collins did, did, does a great job. I do think Anne Hathaway, I mean, it's 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 a pretty it's a pretty intense and raw performance. There are things about the musical adaptation overall that I don't like. I feel like the music is stripped down, which is a little bit how they recorded the music because it's they, they recorded it live, like as they were filming. And the actors could all just hear, hear a piano playing the song in their in their ears. Um, so it feels it it feels a little more raw, which I think might play to Anne Hathaway's advantage in, in her performance of Fantine. Um, and some of the things that you pointed out too, um, about like, uh, I think at the start of that song, like she's she's lying in a quote unquote bed, but it, it looks like a coffin. Yeah, yeah, it's essentially yeah. a coffin. It's essentially a coffin. Um, so I'm, I'm somewhere, I'm somewhere in there, but it definitely is a great, a great part. So you're in the Lily Collins camp. I'm I'm probably in the Lily Collins yeah. camp again, just because because you know I just feel like Fontaine's this tragic character. Her hair's gone, her teeth get pulled out, like, <laughs> and that's much more uh, vivid, vividly done in the miniseries than it is in 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 any of the other uh, the other films. But like we also get to see her again, like I said, like you know I think the song I Dreamed Dream is you know about like you know, giving up all those dreams. And in the mini series, we're allowed to see that character dream a little bit, you know, be hopeful and optimistic about the future. And I might say naive as well. And, and possibly quite naive because other people do warn her in the mini series about these, these guys aren't going to hang around us forever. Yeah. So and frankly, all you had to do was just look at that guy. Oh, geez. All right. Uh, well, he's not one of it. He's not one of, because he's only in that one. So we're not going to evaluate him. All right. You want to? Yeah. So I will <laughs> chime in. Uh, <coughs> so, so I thought Uma Thurman's death scene was really great. Um, that's probably the only thing I, I really loved about her, her performance. I thought Lily Collins was terrific as well. Um, and I love how the film, you know, like, like Kelly said, gave her, gave her character more of an arc. In some ways, what, I, what that does is it makes the tragedy more intense because you have a context for it. Right. Um, but Anne Hathaway, man, yeah. my God. So, it, it is. so here's, here's the thing. Okay, and here's here's why I love the musical, the film musical of Les Mis so much. I've never seen it on stage. I've never seen a a, a, a filmed production of, of it on stage. Um, but but you know, and come after me if you want. Like, come at me with this, right? Like, no, I, I no, no, know no, what no, you're gonna you. have to answer no, no. the comments. I'm just though. I'm just saying. Jeez. So my <laughs> hunch is is that when it's performed on stage. 
because they've got to reach the back of the theater with their voices and because you know these 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 stage musical singers are they're so they're so they're got to be so big you know like they everything like the the performance has to be big and dramatic and this that and the other thing but because in the film the camera is so close on Anne Hathaway's face when she sings I dreamed a dream she is able to she's able to sing in a whisper at times where you couldn't do that in a theater. Nobody would be able to hear it. Um, you know, and it just feels incredibly intimate. So the way that Tom Hooper shot it and the, the decision to record it live on set, the singing live on set, I think it just, it, it freed her up as an actress. And, and that scene is so extraordinarily emotional. I mean, there have been times, I will tell you, there have been times where I have been driving down the road here in Casper, in our car, by myself, listening to that soundtrack, to the movie soundtrack, and listening to Anne Hathaway sing, and I would be bawling my eyes out <laughs> listening to her performance of that song. So, yeah, she's she's amazing. And, you know, there are all these haters who came out when she won the Oscar and stuff, and I don't know, I don't, to this day, understand why that was. Um, all these people who just uh, made a sport for hating Anne, Anne Hathaway, but no, she is like, wonderful in that part. Yeah, and like I don't begrudge her the Oscar. I just begrudge like the the the, the director Tom Hooper. Um, felt like he needed to cast like a whole bunch of celebrities in that in that film. Like there are so many people who already know how to play those parts who know how to sing yeah but maybe they were like big like singers and he wanted but some, a some... singer also know they understand the size of the space right like they understand whether they're singing in a huge stadium or whether the camera's right next to them they can they can pull it back they can rein it in can they can yes, all of them yes i i think many of them can many of them probably can i just think the musical like Okay, cast Hugh Jackman, cast Anne Hathaway, and then give us a bunch of just like really talented singers. You know, like that's it. Uh, that's fine. I love anyway the film. And we yes, we 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 disagree about that. Okay, all right. So the next one should be interesting. Cosette, because <laughs> we've already talked about this a little bit. Yeah, so, so Cosette. Um, I don't like Claire Danes in the role. Her accent is all over the place. Um, and, um, and this, and this. Can we talk about accents for just a second? Uh, sure. I just want to say, like, the miniseries is the only one where anyone uses any French. Um, I mean, it, most of the time, I think Les Mis is. Is full of British accents. I mean, Gavroche yeah. in the musical, like he he fell out of a Dickens novel for crying out loud. Yeah. Like, and what's your point? Everything is made better by a little Dickens. <sighs> yes, that's. But I'm gonna get that tattooed I, on my arm. No, you are not. You are not. And I just I liked the fact in the miniseries there actually was like. We understood we were in France for crying out loud. Okay, anyway, go ahead. All right, so Claire Danes' accent was all over the place. And I'm really of the view that unless you're going to go whole hog and do the accent and nail the accent, just do your own accent, right? I mean, unless you sound like a hillbilly from Appalachia or something like that. I mean, just just whatever accent you bring to the table, that's the one that you should use. Um, so, yeah, Claire Danes uh, didn't impress me at all in that uh, in that film. Um, and, uh, and Amanda Seyfried is, says, yeah, she's fine as Cosette. Um, I'm not as hard on her singing as she herself is now. She feels like, she, like she was a little too, her voice didn't have body enough, I suppose. But I think she has a very pretty voice. Um, I think the problem with Cosette, and maybe this is not the case in the book. I, I, I feel like the character itself is, is, is more thin than she should be. Um, so I would say that my And you don't favorite, mean like physically thin. No, I don't mean physically. I, I mean just not fleshed out enough, which I suppose is I'm saying exactly the same thing. Um, Here's but, the book, uh, people. Do so, we think Cosette is not fleshed out by Victor Hugo? So, I, I don't know. 
I'm just saying, so I, I think she's most fleshed out in the miniseries as a character. And I think that actress does a really good job. I Single will else. say that her Cosette in the miniseries was the maybe my biggest problem with that adaptation. Um, Ellie Bamber is the actress. Isn't it? Okay, okay. So, yeah, I, she was, you were like screaming swear words at the the TV when we were watching the miniseries. She seems like a spoiled brat in the miniseries. Right, right. But the actress does a good job of portraying her as a spoiled brat. And she's not a spoiled brat, which is just so disappointing. Such a lost opportunity to show, like... Yes, she loves Marius, but her <coughs> love for Jean Valjean is very, very deep and very real. Right, but here's the thing, though. So, okay, she's not a spoiled brat in the book, but is she like a milk toast in no, the book? Because she's kind of a milk toast elsewhere. I don't think so. I don't think so. Okay. But that's just so maybe that's the problem is that the the, the filmmakers adapting this book always get that character wrong. I think, again, Amanda Seyfried, Amanda... Seyfried, Seyfried, I'm not, I think it's Seyfried. Yeah. The woman who plays Cosette in the musical adaptation, (coughs) of these three, I would have to go with, but, like, it's a, I mean, I don't know. I don't think any, I don't think any of them really got the, got the part right, and, and, and maybe that's the screenplay, you know? Um, but... Yeah, I I was I was very upset by some of the things that Koza does in the miniseries or acts out in the miniseries. Like that is not that's not that character. Okay, Marius. All right, so uh, Marius, uh, God, who plays him in the miniseries? Uh, it's, oh, it's Josh O'Connor. It's the guy from uh, he's in God's Own Country. And, uh, and he was in The Crown. I think he plays Prince Charles in The Crown. I think. Um, but I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go with Eddie Redmayne. Uh, as says Marius. So here's... Okay, so for context. The dude who plays him, who plays Marius in... Or Marius in um, the... 1998. The Liam Neeson one. Yeah. That guy is... There's a reason that that guy never became a star. I mean, you want to talk about an actor with no screen presence. I... And no chemistry. I'm not sure that's with, entirely with true. I mean, maybe he didn't have any chemistry. I just feel like... There could have been chemistry, he, though. Like, it is such an inert... Flat performance. I mean, it's terrible. And, and I think, even though again, like Josh O'Connor is given more as Marius, and his and his character has has more space and more room to be fleshed out in the miniseries. Like I find him very milk toast in that. So okay, well that's fair. I don't agree, but that's fair. That's, it's okay. But Eddie Redmayne, I think Eddie was... Redmayne. You know, this was before he was an Oscar winner. This was before he was a big star. Um, he wasn't one of the actors that the film was kind of marketed on the backs of. Um, and he's terrific in it. Like, you watch it and you feel like he's going to he's gonna become something really big. And he did, lo and behold. He just communicates confidence, I think. And, um, and so you believe him as, as a key figure in this revolution. Um, you just buy it. Yeah, so. and I think for me, and again, you know, when it's a feature film, like it's really obviously, to you can't you can't get a thousand page um, book in there. I think what I struggle with in the musical with Marius is that you know it's like he sees he sees Koza and like they instantly like fall in love with each other, which is true in the in the Liam Neeson one as well, right? Um, in the 1988 uh, You just one. don't believe it they, at they all just, in that one. I, I just don't really... I'm not, I'm not sure I'd really buy it in, in the musical. In the novel, um, they, they pass each other. They see each other. Um, there's not a ton of conversation, but they, it's over a year before I think he finally actually gets to speak to Cosette. Which feels to me much, much more believable um, that 
you know, I buy the romance much more because it's because it it takes so much longer. They could have um, done that in the films. They could have communi- communicated that in like a Notting Hill way with like, oh, Marius is walking along a, a market and the seasons change behind him. Right, they could have done something like that. Maybe, yeah. maybe. Okay, all right. Um, I think maybe just one more character. Yeah, Eponine. Yeah, Eponine. Eponine, which is which is tough. I don't. Okay, so I did look online. Um, there is an Eponine in the nineteen ninety eight adaptation, but we um, don't remember. I her. don't remember her. I I I. I feel like we got done with the film and we were like, where's Ebony? Yeah. (laughs) Um, Yeah. So maybe she was cut from it. I mean, because the film, that film does feel really truncated. I mean, it feels, you want to talk about. Well, let's, yeah, let's save that because I I want to say a lot about that that, that film. But anyway, so, so then we have um, Samantha, Samantha Barks in the musical. And then I'm trying to remember who Eponine is um, in the She is the redhead. Yeah, no, I mean, I remember what she looks like. I just don't uh, remember what her so real name her is. So her name is Erin Kellyman. So who are you choosing? Jeopardy theme song. I, I think I'm going to go with the miniseries one. I... <sighs> yeah, it's so hard. She's such an amazing character in in the book and um there's a particular scene that's in the mini series. It's not it's not exactly what's in the book. I'm so happy that that scene is in the the mini series. There's like a a peephole that Marius looks through his his room and and Eponine and her family the Thenardiers who are the like crooks basically mm-hmm. um uh, of this of the story like they're um living next door although in the novel Mar- uh Marius discovers the hole on his own and in the miniseries like she points it out to him which is a little like kind of a little weird um well she she's She's got a thing for him. She has a thing for him. Yeah. I get it, but it's very, very close. I, I Samantha Barks does have a, a nice voice. Um, I love those songs are the songs that I love, really, really love in the musical. Um, but yeah, so I'm probably gonna go with the mini series, but it's yeah. It's so to what extent? With the character of Eponine, uh, are you choosing the miniseries because of the performance or because of the the role as written? So I actually, <clears throat> I actually think it's the performance. Okay. So I, I, I think, I think there's like, I don't know, like she's rougher, rougher around the edges, maybe. Yeah. Well, and she, you know, in the miniseries, the character as written has more of the characteristics of her family, which are unflattering characteristics, than she does in the musical. Um, and so, so yeah, so for me, I would probably pick her as well. I'd probably go with her as well. Um, but it, it has a lot to do with how the role's written. I feel like Eponine as a character is much more complicated in the miniseries. And I think the actress does a, a good job. Yeah. Um, and she's also just really... She's really striking, you know. She like she's got that like really like full, curly red hair and and um, yeah, like I mean, she really uh, unlike the guy who plays Marius in the in the late nineties, Les Mis, um, she has a lot of screen presence. Yeah, I, I don't know that she's got the makings of being like a, a great movie star or anything, but uh, I could certainly see her as a uh, you know a, a character actress. Who's uh, who's you know gonna have a long career ahead of her, uh, playing interesting kind of small roles in uh, in films. So yeah. yeah, I'd probably go with her as well. Yeah, it's tough. It's tough. All right. So let's say you could only watch one one of these films. This could it could only be 
You only get one Les Mis to watch forever. Which one do you pick, Jason? The Tom Hooper musical. <laughs> yeah. Of course. Of that's, course. The only, that's the only one that makes me cry. You know, and it's a really, it's such a moving story. And it's the only one of these, of these three films that, uh, that, that makes me cry. And it makes me cry pretty good too. So I, I do find, well, when I, I, I've since, since finishing the book, I have listened to the original Broadway cast, um, musical recording and, and there are, yeah, the, there are times where I'm very, very moved. I'm less moved by the film. I think, like I said, it just, to me, it feels, feels, the music feels thin, which for some songs that's okay, but not, not all of them. I just think it feels raw, you know? It feels unpolished. It feels like it comes from a, a kind of primal place. Yeah. And, um, and that, you know, I don't know, I, that works for you. It doesn't work for you. It really works for me. Yeah. I did. And, and, and probably because I was so familiar with the original Broadway cast score, like, when we saw the movie, I was like, huh, I don't know, like, uh. okay, we have to talk about the 1998 Liam Neeson um, adaptation, so, the way that film ends um, is so shocking to me that they would end the film at that particular point, like, there is so much more. There is so much more to the story. There is so much more that is in these other adaptations. Um, and, you know, I'm not saying, like, a feature film always has to have, you know, everything that's in the book. Again, impossible, really, with Les Miserables. Yeah. I will say the miniseries is the only adaptation of these three that includes any of kind of what people might refer to as Victor Hugo's tangents where all of a sudden like you're at waterloo right or all of a sudden you're learning about all of the sewer system of paris and it you it starts off at the very beginning with the end of the waterloo scene which i thought was really brave i thought that was really brave and bold for them to to include that part although it is it is absolutely so important to the story in how these characters are connected to each other. Um, and so I thought it was great that they included that. The 1998 film adaptation, the fact that the it ends with Liam Neeson just walking down the street, like away back to Cosette and Marius or nothing, whatever, nothing. like, like, there's nothing, I mean, it was just so, and I remember even seeing it in the theater. I mean, like, this is, this is the end? Like, no, no, the end is, is Jean Valjean's death. And like the way that that is played out. And again, I, I don't, I don't feel like any of these movies, um, or the or the miniseries get it right like the death yes oh I don't, my I, god i don't feel no there's so much more there's oh. so much more it's like <coughs> i was reading it and i i know i know what's gonna happen at the end of i miss rob okay like i you, know you were a mess at the end of reading that book i was yeah. and i mean and it was so moving and i was crying and it was so suspicious suspenseful too there's so much tension at the at the point and i just i thought i thought the miniseries at least would come close to getting it right the and musical no no so, the musical so, the musical does come closer so the, but the scene still... the scene of valjean's death in the musical where uh we have fontaine appearing behind him um, and like, it just feels, it is, there's something so cosmic about it. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I know you laugh when I use that word, but that, that scene is the best, it's the best scene in the film. And, um, and it's, it's the whole selling point for the movie. Like, it's just, you know, so, okay. So there are moments in movies, okay. In, in really great movies. Um, well, not even in all great movies. But occasionally in a film, there's 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 a scene where 
the filmmaking just, like, it just becomes transcendent. It's like, it's greater even than the director was anticipating. You know, something magical happens. And, um, and that, that scene in the, in the musical, in Tom Hooper's musical, is one of those moments. Like, it is, and as it is great so as extraordinarily that, it, beautiful. It, as great as that scene is, like, they could have done just a little, like, the moments leading <coughs> up to that scene are so full of tension and, like, suspense again like i and i just I, like why why not take advantage of that like and i realize you know when we're talking about the musical it is an adaptation of a stage production so i mean they added one song uh but mm. you know you can't veer you can't veer too far off right yeah um but i just it's important to remember though yeah like it's it's less an adaptation of the novel right than it's an, it adap an adaptation yeah. of a stage musical. yeah and I, I feel like, I feel like the stage musical is, or, or my experience with the stage musical was more moving than the film experience of it was. But I just, um, yeah, I, you know, I'm, I'm not gonna pick one because, as much as this, this gets one? close, okay, this gets really close. But there are some things in here that are just, I don't. If you have six hours, like, use it! <laughs> use the six hours! <laughs> um, because you you cannot, like, Victor Hugo, like, man, it's, the book is just so phenomenal. Like, that's what I would say, is that, you know what, like. You're choosing the book I'm as choosing your the version book. of the movie. I'm choosing the book. All right. The book is better! It's so much better, and well, maybe it is. I haven't read it. Though. I know you haven't read it, but anyway, so like I, I if, if I had to, oh god, if I could only pick one, like just pick the mini series. Oh, all right, fine. I'll just there pick the mini. I, I still get to listen to my original Broadway you score, can, though. You can, yeah, that's fine. <laughs> all right, so we have talked quite a bit here, and I have no idea how long it's going to take me to edit this video. But we would love to hear from you down below in the comment section. What is your favorite adaptation of Les Miserables? Or would you choose the book instead if you could only have one forever? That's, this is booktube. That's an unfair question. <laughs> all right. All right, all right, all right. Which film adaptation would you pick? Um, or, you know, wh what did you feel like about our answers? Do you agree? Do you disagree? Um, what are your favorite performances? Who are your, yeah, what are your yeah. favorite performances? And maybe there's a, there, I mean, there's so many film adaptations of Les Miserables, so maybe there's one that we haven't seen that um, you have and loved and we should check out. So um, if you don't feel comfortable leaving a comment down below in the comment section, no worries. You can always leave an emoji. You can leave a little French flag down there. Um, or you can give this video a thumbs up just as a way to say hello and I love that as well. So thank you so much for watching BookTube and yay, 500 plus videos. So very exciting. Congratulations. <laughs> All right. Thank you guys so much for watching and I'll be back soon with another video. Bye.